So dimensional constraints let you set up the distances or angles between pieces of two-dimensional geometry and then you can control them by applying values. You can also set up equations that control the distances and angles. For example, in this drawing you can see that the radius of this outer arc is one and a half times the radius of the circle. When you apply a dimensional constraint to an object, a constraint variable is automatically created for maintaining the constraint value. For example, here you can see that the radius of this circle is identified by the variable rad1. I can also see that these are not just dimensions, but they're dimensional constraints by this little padlock icon adjacent to the dimension. So it's very easy to differentiate between regular dimensions and dimensional constraints. So I apply dimensional constraints and control their appearance using the tools here in the dimensional panel on the parametric ribbon bar. Dimensional constraints control the size and the proportions of a design. They can constrain the distance between objects or between points on objects, the angles between objects, and the sizes of the circles and the arcs that I have here. So as you've just seen, if I change the value of a dimensional constraint, all the constraints on the object are reevaluated and the objects that are affected are automatically updated. Of course, in order for this to work as intended, I've got to first establish the geometric constraints that I need and then apply the dimensional constraints. If I apply dimensional constraints before creating those geometric constraints, then when I change the dimension, the geometry is just going to fall apart. So you definitely want to apply those geometric constraints first. In AutoCAD, when you were working with dimensions, the dimensions were called associative. So if I changed the size of the object, the dimension updated. But now with dimensional constraints, I'm going to change the size of the dimension and the object is going to update. By default, dimensional constraints are not objects. They display in a single style and they maintain their size even when you zoom. And they're typically not going to be plotted. Now, if you do want to make your dimensional constraints into objects they're going to plot, then I can make them into annotative dimensional constraints. Then they will not only control the size of the objects, but they're also going to behave like dimensions inside of AutoCAD in that I can then apply a dimension style to them and they will plot along with the drawing. So the dimensional constraints can really then serve both purposes.